Hello, my wonderful pre-algebra students. I hope that everyone's doing all right. This is going to be our first real lesson of the year, and it should be a review for everybody. Now, remember, I'm going to be talking in class about this, but I want everyone to remember that we have seventh graders and eighth graders. Everyone's kind of coming in at a different place. So if you're feeling like I'm doing stuff that you already know, that's okay. It's a review for you. It might be new for some other students. We're just trying to level the playing field, make sure that everybody feels like they've got the basics under control before we kind of start flying through some of the material that we're going to cover this year. So this should be a review for every one of you, I think. Uh, we're going to be talking about order of operations. In order of operations, sometimes we use this word PEMDAS to help us remember um, what order we have to do our math in. So the P stands for parentheses. But remember that can be any kind of grouping symbol. So it can be just regular parentheses or brackets or like the squiggly brackets or like there's lots of different things that we do with different kinds of grouping symbols. We just use P for parentheses just because it makes our word a little bit better. E is for exponents. Now those of you who have um, heard of this called PERMDAS, Exponents and radicals kind of go together. We're not going to be looking at radicals for a little while, so we're going to leave that out for now. But exponents are the little raised numbers that um, tell us about repeated multiplication. The M and the D get confusing for some people because some people see the M first and they think you have to multiply before you divide. And I need you to remember when we are doing our multiplication and division, that has to go from left to right. So as you're looking at your problem, if there's a division before a multiplication, they're like the same importance level, you have to go from left to right. And the same thing happens with addition and subtraction. So when we're looking at these, you don't always add before you subtract, you just have to do whatever comes first when you're going from left to right. So I've got a couple of problems here that I wanna take a look at with you. In this first one, we do have some stuff in parentheses. So this is going to be the first thing that we do. I'm going to be showing some work. I know that some of you can do a lot of this in your head, and I trust that you can, but I'm still going to say write a little bit of stuff down. It doesn't make you smarter to not write anything down. It's, it really does help if you write things down for later. So the 3 and the minus are just going to stay for right now. 5 minus 1 is just, or 5 minus 4 is just 1. So then when I do this, my final answer is going to be all right, there it is. In the second problem, thinking about order of operations, the thing that would happen first is this, right? We have to multiply before we add. I'm going to give you that answer, then I'm going to tell you the wrong answer if you did this in the wrong order so that you can see maybe where a mistake could be made. So the 4 isn't getting touched yet. The 6 times 2, that's 12, and 4 plus 12, that's going to be 16. Now, if you made a mistake, if you accidentally did this first, if you did 4 plus 6, you'd have 10, and then you multiply it by 2 and you get 20. So you would get a totally different answer. That's exactly why order of operations is so important. It's so that everybody in the whole world does everything in the same order when we're solving math problems. In the third problem, it looks like a big fraction. Remember though, this fraction bar right here, it's really just a division sign, right? I know that some people see that fraction bar and they think fractions and they kind of get scared. We're not scared of fractions. We like fractions. Fractions are our friend. So when we're doing this problem, I also want you to kind of think about a division or a fraction bar, almost like another grouping symbol. This is saying do everything on the top separate from everything on the bottom. Well, there isn't anything to do in the bottom, and that's okay. But in this problem, I would be starting with this 2 times 2 because I have to multiply before I add. So I'm going to have negative 6 plus 2 times 2 is 4, and then it'll be divided by negative 1. So in the numerator, again, negative 6 plus 4, that would be negative 2 and then dividing by negative 1, since they're the same signs, we're going to get a positive answer, and that'll be a positive 2. I should write that on here, too. Another big fraction in this problem, 
but it's not just a big fraction. There's the one that's out in front that's getting added to it. And there's something else. This minus a negative thing right here, that can get really confusing. And I'm probably gonna say this, I'm not exaggerating, probably a hundred times for sure. I'm gonna say, I don't like that minus a negative thing. So different teachers have probably said this in different ways to you. Um, some teachers say you're going to add the opposite. Some teachers talk about keep, change, change. Um, here at Ben Franklin, a lot of people say keep, change, change, which means I'm going to keep this negative 9 exactly the way it is. I'm going to change the subtraction to addition, and then I'm also going to change the sign of this number. This really just turns into negative 9 plus 1, which to me looks a lot better than negative 9 minus a negative 1. So in the numerator then, well, let me rewrite, I've got the 1, I've got the plus. In the numerator, I'm going to have negative 9 plus 1, which would be negative 8. And then I'm going to have that divided by 2, and I have to do my division before I do my addition. So I'd have 1 plus negative 8 divided by 2 is going to be negative 4. Sometimes I'll put that in parentheses, but you don't really have to if you can read your own writing. And then 1 plus a negative 4 should be a negative 3. And on the second problem on this slide, this one is just a, a big fraction. So in the numerator, the first thing I have to do is this multiplication right here. So negative 10 times 2 is going to be a negative 20. And I still have the plus 5. In the denominator, I would do again, keep change, change. So I'm going to keep my negative 6 exactly how it is, change the subtraction, change the sign of that next number. Negative 6 plus 3 is really just negative 3. Now, negative 20 plus 5, since they're different signs, we're going to subtract. We keep the sign from the bigger number. There's more negative, so it's going to be a negative 15 divided by negative 3, which is positive 5 for our answer on that one. And this last really nice problem, doesn't this look just beautiful? Uh, we have two sets of parentheses, and they're sometimes they call it nested. So one set of parentheses is inside another set of parentheses. Instead of fraction bars, I wrote this one to have the division signs that you might be a little bit more used to. But still, in terms of um, PEMDAS, P is for parentheses. I have to look at my parentheses, and I have to do this stuff on the inside first. I am going to show every step of work. So I'm going to keep all the stuff I didn't do, 18 divided by parentheses, 2. 5 minus 2 is 3, but I can't just write the 3 right here because it'll look like 23. It was in parentheses on purpose, and we'll talk about that in a second. And I'm just going to rewrite all the rest of this stuff. Inside the parentheses now, this is 2 times 3. So I'm going to have 18 divided by 2 times 3 is going to be 6 plus 12 divided by 4. I know that some of you are like, come on, Mrs. Kempe, hurry up. It's got to go faster than that. I'm going to take my time for right now. Now I've got division stuff and I've got addition stuff. So I'm going to do this division. And really, I can do this division over here also because they're not connected and it's not going to affect anything. I'm still going from left to right. So 18 divided by 6 is going to be 3. Plus 12 divided by 4 is also going to be 3 which gives me an answer of 6. Now, today, what I'm going to ask you to do, what we would usually do in the past for homework is now just going to be really our practice. So I have an order of operations worksheet. It's got 10 problems. It won't take you very long. It's in Schoology, and I have the answer key in Schoology. Please don't just copy what's on the answer key. I want you to do the work. I want you to be practicing. Use the answer key to check it. Make sure that you know what you're doing. And if you made a mistake, make sure that you figured out your mistake. If you can't figure out one of your mistakes, that's what you should be asking me about. You can email me. You can ask me the next time you see me in class if you're going to be face to face. Um, but somehow let me know if you need some help. So I do want you to show some work. There's not a lot, just a little bit. When you finish those practice problems, those 10 practice problems, then I want you to take the learning check that's in Schoology. It's going to be four questions. It won't take you very long. You just have to be careful and show and 
use your order of operations, make sure that you show some work on paper if you need to, okay? If you have any questions about this, let me know and I will talk to you again soon.